All right, I'm Tom Zog. This is Kevin Clark. We're talking about Occupy. We're from the People's Political Party. You might remember us. You will remember a couple of years ago, I believe he was one of the youngest provincial party president in the history of Ontario. A young man named Thomas Zack shot the city of Toronto when he, as a candidate for the People's Political Party, announced on Rogers that he intended to occupy Toronto. He says the People's Political Party intended to occupy Toronto. I supported Thomas Zag fully then, but I did not support the methods that many individuals in Occupy were resorting to. I believe that the concept of Occupy was awesome. It was about poverty, the needs of humanity, in comparison to the wants of the few, the corporate greed. Canada, out of Afghanistan, that was the chant, that occupied chant, because we are a peaceful nation. And to keep the peace, we must see that the needs of the people are always maintained in their time of need. So let's talk about housing. The large amount of people who are displaced. The large amount of people who are without homes. But the corporate structure is so many of these homes that could save these precious lives of people are being stored up or being left there for the sake of profit or for the sake of write-offs. What if we had the people occupy those homes? Would we have the same homeless problem? Would we have the same amount of poverty? Our law, our law is precious. Leave all well. But no longer the law is about the people because the law has been invaded by those who are there for their own power hungry struggle or those who are there for financial rewards or to make quotas. It is time for the people to occupy their law, to occupy justice. Our government, our government has been invaded by politicians and politics. No longer do we have that pure public servant who is not there just for a career or a pension or to exercise authority over someone. We have a government that is occupied by the people. How is a government occupied by the people when the focus of that government is the people? Politicians have taken over our government. Now it's liberal, conservative, new Democrats, or Democrats or Republican. It's not about government. Once you are elected to government, your party ties does not matter because now you are a servant to the people. So, amen to that. <laughs> so, here's what I propose. We're going to show who poverty affects. We're going to show who homelessness affects, who hunger affects, who police abuse of authority affects, who political abuse of authority affects. It affects the people. And where does the people come from? Who are the people? We are one family, the family of humanity. When we are hungry, we must be fed. When we're thirsty, we must have water. When we're alone, loneliness is pain. And we must have a relief for that pain. And only love relieve that pain. So Toronto, we are going to return Occupy. We are going to look to occupy the homes that are vacant and occupy it with people. We're going to look to deoccupy our jails and see that we learn from those who have taken the wrong path or those who have made mistakes. And we're gonna see that we can make their life a lot better 
and a lot more prosperous. We are going to come together of one race, the human race. We're going to come together as one nation, creation. We are going to help encourage peace of mind for all mankind. And the fact of the matter is, the people must occupy their service of government, and the service of government must be the needs of humanity. So whether we come back with the name Occupy or Unify, the bottom line is no one will die because we deny their needs because of the wants of our eyes, the wants of property, the wants of money, the wants of lust, the wants of flesh, the wants of material things. Because the bottom line on it is, is what the eyes do not see. That is what we all need to be one humanity. We do not see hunger. We do not see thirst. We do not see loneliness. Hmm. Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the world. It is time for the people to see it. But not just your hunger, your thirst, your loneliness. Let's see that all can enjoy the livelihood of the life at their very utmost best. Respect humanity. Respect each other. Let's inspire hope and give dignity by investing in humanity. Support the people. The People's Party. Because we inspire hope. few years ago when me and Kevin started this party we wanted to do the best that we could we wanted to tackle this false dichotomy between left and right nice. we wanted our, our party to be focused on what was in the best interests of the people because we come from the understanding that we're all in this together. Now we don't pretend to have all of the answers or all of the solutions. We need you for that. Yes. This is a, a conversation that everyone needs to be a part of because we are only aware of the things that we are aware of. And there are things that you are aware of in your own experiences and by sharing those, we can all better understand how to make the world better. If we want to make the world better, it's about realizing that we're in it together. And I mean, if you want to be really analytical, we are literally in the world together. We're all on this rock. Breathing the same breath. Drinking the same water. Eating the same nutrition, whether we have healthy food or unhealthy food. But there's some major problems that are going on. Because businesses are have taken over the necessities of life. It is now about profit and not people. And the fact of life is that we cannot grow the trees quick enough. So would you replace your oxygen... For the sake of a million dollars, I saved them a billion dollars. But what is a dollar? What is a dollar? A dollar is a representation of value. And every year, the inflation rate goes up. Every year, things cost more. But do, does your paycheck go up every year? No. Every year, they're giving you less and less and less. So why not take the real value? L, life, O, off, V, value, E. What gives you a life of value except equality? Because if I give equality to you and people start focusing on the equality of humanity and be true, realize that even though many will say the blood underneath is blue, 
blood cells are red and white. So people are not black or white because the blood cells are not black or white. We are living in separation, which leads to discrimination, which leads to fear. And that fear leaves a lot of people hungry, a lot of people without, because we no longer embrace the needs of support, of giving to the livelihood of our fellow man, because we are more concerned about ourself. But a wise man once says that when people say, how does this saying goes? It says, love yourself. How does it go? Love yourself. Love others as you love yourself? No, there is another one. It says, um, take care of yourself. I don't know if I know this one. I don't there think is, I've heard yeah, this one. It's, about, it's basically a saying that says, to take care of yourself and God will take care of you. Is that how it goes? I, I'm i not... Oh, is it the Lord helps those that help themselves? Yes. The Lord, God helps those that help themselves. But in in my religion, that's that's something that I've noticed seems to be misunderstood and misinterpreted. And it seems to... It seems, anyway, in, in my own life, you know, like my dad being a, an oil executive, uh, that's basically part of the problem, part of destroying the planet and everything else. Uh, you know, him trying to help himself, you know, to a bunch of money, uh, <laughs> that's not what the Lord wanted him to, but, that's not what that meant. You know what I mean? But here's the, here's the, here's <laughs> what makes this year not religion. This is not reality, right? The saying, God helps those who help themselves, only a fool will believe that. I believe God helps those who help others because if God helps those who help themselves, what would you need God for if you can help yourself what are you gonna, if you can help yourself what are you going to need God for God help those who help themselves so what are you going to need God for but God help those who help others you know an interesting verse in the Bible and we might get a little sidetracked here but yeah. let, let, let's understand this all of our laws are founded on God mm -hmm. and there are a lot of judges and lawyers that don't believe in a God, which opens a huge question, like how can you ethically participate in that system if you don't believe in the fundamental concept that it is based upon? But we're going to get to the real issue of religion. We're going to get to the issue of race, because I don't believe in race and religion. I believe, well, I believe in one race, my race. I know in my eyes, that my race is the greatest race. And there's many fools out there who say, he's saying black race. No, I despise black race. I despise the white race. I only respect one race. That's the human race. And he doesn't mean the rat race either. Because, yeah. I mean, that's basically what we're living in, folks. Yeah, the yes, rat race. The it's rat terrible. Race. So let's <laughs> embrace the human race. And when we embrace humanity we can end the hypocrisy because people will not deceive you with false reality look at my palm do they look black to you my grandfather's a caucasian my grandmother's a negro they had 14 kids together so you ask oh, were they black or white no they were blood cells and oxygen they were of creation, creation. When we focus on creation, that is the cornerstone, not, I would say the root, but it's not the cornerstone, it's the root to our focus and our mission, which is world peace. Peace on earth, goodwill to all. And the only way we can encourage that 
is to have us embrace humanity. And to embrace humanity, we must embrace creation. You know, Martin Luther King once said, Peace is not the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. Nah, well said, well said. I, but I, you know, that's what it's all about, right? And we have so much injustice in our world right now. The reason we have... We're, pushed, we're being pushed closer and closer towards the brink of some war that the people in those countries don't want and the people in these countries don't want. So for us to address those issues, we are going to focus on true issues. I have a meaning for Toronto. T for that. O for our. R for righteous. T O R. That's our righteous O. Opportunity. N not. T to. O oppress. That's our righteous opportunity not to oppress. Toronto. So how do we become... That's our righteous opportunity not to oppress Toronto. Yeah. That's brilliant. You know, That's six million people from all over the world live here. <laughs> Every <laughs> race, religion, <laughs> creed. Imagine you know. if we can get the wisest of all to come together of one mind and focus on the needs of mankind. People say, why don't you say man when you say, no, I say mankind because you see mankind is three in one. Those who say God, they'll say God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. But there's three that's great. And that's the man, the woman, and the child. Because you see, those three makes God. Because without the man, the woman, there is no child. And without the child, there is no man. There is no woman. So the three entwined as one. But what does those three create? They create God. Because if those three didn't exist, who would be there to know of God? Now there's another word I use to describe God. For those who say they're atheists or those who are against the atheists, I have nothing against the atheists. No, and honestly, I think God probably understands why you'd be an atheist. Well, of course, <laughs> because God made them atheists. Because they already believe a large percentage of atheists already know God. So they don't need to believe. What do you need to believe what you already know? And how do you know they know God? Because of their deeds, because of their actions, because of how they carry themselves. So they might say, I don't believe that there is a God there, but they don't need to believe because God already knows them. And if God knows them, then they know God. They just don't know it yet. So you remember. As I tell you today, and I firmly, truly, and believe that for those who judge the atheists, may God have mercy on you because if you judge the atheists, what you are going to prove is the total power of God because there will be more atheists that will enter the kingdom of heaven than those, <laughs> Amen. Who, well, than those who judge the atheists because if you judge this atheist and condemn him, but he doesn't condemn you. He may condemn the religion, but he didn't condemn you. He loved you as the individual. Because when you were hungry, he gave you food to eat. When you were thirsty, he gave you water to drink. When you were lonely or in pain, they embrace you. But hold it. The one who said they were so godly told you to go get a job. <laughs> right? Say, I'm not going to give you money because you're going to go get drugs. But hold it. They wouldn't give you money. Because they say you're going to go get drugs. And then they go home feeling real proud saying, you see, if I had given that guy money, that guy would have spent it on drugs. But hold it. The guy said he was hungry. And you were so low and so ungodly, glorifying yourself, you walked 
right by the McDonald's. And the McDonald's would have exchanged your money for food. So you wouldn't have to have no fear that he was going to spend the money God entrusted in you on drugs. But you were so on I mighty in yourself that you just let a man go hungry. So you just went against God's law. Because God says when a man is hungry, give him food to eat. So God sent that person in the disguise of a drug addict to see if you were going to focus on his needs or were you going to judge him because of his transgression. And here's the thing. Even if the guy goes and buys drugs, do you know why people do like hard drugs, like stuff like crack but, or but, heroin? But, or? But, 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 but let's get away from that. Let's say it was minus 30 outside. You pass by the guy. And if you had given the guy some money, and the guy had gone to that crack house, he would not have frozen to death outside that night. Because the reason God wanted you to give him money, in my opinion, was so he could get indoors. And God worked in mysterious ways. So you say, yeah, but he's going to have a crack house. Unfortunately, only the crack house would have accepted him. And God takes care of his children. And God's main purpose was to see that this person did not freeze to death outside. So it's just like this evening when I got into an argument with someone and they'd ask for a bus to your home. But I spoke out and they got angry at them. And it was ignorant. They left and walked away. But God took my anger and turned it into a positive. Because if God didn't, if I couldn't get angry, she wouldn't have walked away. And if she didn't have walked away, that old lady who was trying to find a homeless shelter would have been walking from Young all the way distance to Bathurst. But thank God she walked away and walked in that direction because they met up each other and she was able to direct her to the homeless shelter. And thank God I end up having to walk that way because I was concerned about her having bus here. Because when we reached the corner where our bus stop is, some girl came up behind another and threw her down to the ground. And if I wasn't there, we probably would have seen another murder in Toronto. So remember one thing about the negative things in life. Remember one thing about mistakes, why you do not judge people because of them. Because there's only one word to describe a mistake, a lesson to be learned. And who is against learning? Certainly not a wise man. So Toronto, we're going to look to deal with the needs of humanity. And John Tory, we're not here to fight you. We are here to set you straight if you are not straight. Well, we're really here to help. To help. <laughs> God is with us and do support the people, the People's Political Party of Ontario, and soon to come, the People's Party of Canada. We love you guys. Uh... Mm -hmm. Our website, www.the-people's-p-e-o-p-l-e-s-o-p-h-o-p-e.com. Our email address, creating, C-R-E-A-T-I-N-G, good, G-O-O-D, people, P-E-O-P-L-E, -E, at gmail.com. Let love be the key why we all live in this humanity. And we would just also like to put out a, a small request uh, for the gifts and talents uh, of people that feel uh, inspired to help, that, that want to be a part of uh, making these good things happen. We need people uh, with computers uh, and internet connections 
and people with graphic design capabilities and people people that are better at doing this kind of stuff than me and Kevin are because <laughs> but we have a large team we have a lot of youth that's in our yes program the youth employment strategy and we also have great supporters we do have uh, people who stand behind us who are in the richest people in this country and they may not support us largely financially because we, when we don't ask but they are with us and we thank them for their support. We also have a large amount of international support, whether it's Nigeria, Pakistan, all across the world. People are embracing the people, the people's political party. Why? Because we are the people's voice. And the only way for us to deal with our most pressing social issues is for us to take back what belongs to all of us. And Government is from God. Government is a service of God. And government is a service to do good. And we must return government back to the people. Our law, our law must stand for what it means. L-A-W. Leave all well. The law is not for personal gains and not for vengeance. And we must deal with our social decay. Poverty is not the right way. We cannot condole spending billions on wars while millions go hungry because of the billions we spend on the war. We must house people because nature and the environment takes a great toll on the physical flesh. We must feed the hungry. We must teach the children well. And there's only three ways to teach the children. Love, acceptance, forgiveness. Teach them to have fun. And when you love, accept others, and forgive. Oh, you saw that? That was just a point. But for those who do this and say, do this, all I say to you is, don't go halfway. This is half. Take the other half. <laughs> That's what we stand for. God is with us. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> we love you guys. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're imperfect. We, we like showing flaws. I think that's important. But God is perfect. And people who do good, they seek perfectness too. So, as we close, we say stay warm. See that not your family or your friend is safe. See that everyone is safe. And stand up for the needs of all. Peace on earth, goodwill to all, and have a wonderful day. Good luck. <laughs>